in it, which is Marks & Spencer. Everyone's got a view on Marks & Spencer. We all think we can run this company. Uh, the predictions today are of a 13th straight quarterly fall in underlying sales in non-food. The business dragged down by its uh, clothing supply chain problems. A warm autumn has hit clothing sales, according to some retailers. Kate Hardcastle is an independent retail analyst, consumer expert. Good morning to you. Um, what are we expecting? What are they, what's going wrong? Well, Marks & Spencer, as you said, is the company everyone thinks they can run, but they have this brand asset, this brand tagline of it's your m and And I don't think people think it's their m and at the moment. Food is, is brilliant and successful and bar a few issues on quality, people are generally enjoying that. And they've had successes in taking that to service stations and, and smaller stores that are food only, etc. But in the clothing, even though it's been five years of turning round, things are still not connecting with all of the customers and it is hard but to... But it is impossible, isn't it? They've got to be all things to it all people. Is it's hard to be all things to all men. Therefore, as a retailer, you have to work out who you're appealing to rather than appealing to you know, a certain few. So trying to get the fashion editors to like certain pieces and then those pieces being out of stock. The fact of the matter is the customers are feeling challenged. They don't feel in love with that store and they need to. That's their brand asset. The service element isn't there, people on floors. And what they need to do is go out and reassure that customer of who they are today because five years in the retail climate that we've just had is a very different five years. Online, competitors, Zara, you name it. It's a tough place out there. Because that's the interesting thing. I just Women of a certain age used to gravitate towards them and now I think 50 year old, fifty is the new 30, 60 is the new 40. You don't feel the gravitational pull to M&S that you once did. Well, customer loyalty isn't what it used to be. I'll move off the age issue straight away. But customer loyalty <laughs> is not what it used to be. And therefore, you are not likely to go back there because you can take a coat you bought 10 years ago. What they need to go out is really embrace that customer. And you can't do all of that in the boardroom. You need to get on the floors, speak to those loyal customers and, and try and pull them back into the brand and say, this is what is we're going to do. Is it too late? Well, what's a £10 meal deal for clothes? You know, no, it's not. You can offer great value and get customers through your door. OK, you and Cameron Watt. Um, Mark Bolland's been in charge for five years. Have he, has he had long enough? Is his seat secure? I think that the city's going to stay with, with Mark Bolland for a bit longer. But, you know, five years is a period of time in which you want to see some, some change starting to come through. And I think he's acknowledging himself when he's saying, we're nearly done. I think that's the messaging. He knows that time is now a little bit against him. OK, and it's all about the clothes, isn't it? When they had that great um, advertising campaign with Twiggy and what have you, they, they had quite a good collection. It's all about whether the clothes are nice, isn't it? The clothes have got to be great quality. OK, all right. Well, Kate Harcastle, thank you very much indeed. You and Cameron Watt, thank you to you. We'll get those results out at seven o'clock and I know we'll be speaking to Mr Mark Bolland later in the programme. Thank you very much.